What content goes viral? Okay, let's go through it. Does porn go viral? Boys watch a porn video. They say, bro, you got to see this. Does, does porn get a lot of eyeballs? It's porn gets eyeballs. eyeballs. It's eyeballs. Viral, that's but, but wait a minute. It gets eyeballs. a lot of eyeballs. Yes, right? yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. All right. What, what else goes viral nowadays? What else gets a lot of eyeballs nowadays? So Stupid dances. Stupid dances. Stupid pranks. Stupid pranks. What else? Pranks Anything nonsensical. Eyeballs. So you have to a- answer the question, why is all of this content about depensifying men going viral? on platforms that don't defend this argument. Meaning, Instagram doesn't defend what he stands for, okay? TikTok doesn't support what he talks about, okay? YouTube doesn't defend and stand what he stands for. The core foundation of those companies is very different than the core foundation of what he has towards women because they're more feminist, they're more men are, you know, making men weaker, all that stuff. But if these things are getting this many eyeballs, Maybe what it's saying is the market is sitting around saying, dude, we've been waiting for this for a while, man. Like, you know, the market wants to kind of have somebody talk. It doesn't mean it's true or not, but hey, maybe it's what we're thinking about. Maybe it's what a lot of people are thinking about. And that makes some people uncomfortable to say, no, no. Like the other day, you know, the, the, one of my kids, they were watching a movie without my permission and there was a scene in it. And my eight year old, my 10 year old, we had to have the conversation about, you know, gays, lesbians, all this other stuff. I kind of shared with you how I had the conversation with them. When the moment I had this conversation, Jim walked out. She's like, babe, this is between you like to have these types of talks. I don't want to have these. You and the two boys. I sat down and I gave them every possible visual they could get. So this is what's going on. And in many cases, people who are not teaching this because a father figure's not in it, we have to have this talk. You know what's crazy? As much as I did not want to have that conversation at that point, I love the fact that I was forced to have it because I'm able to get ahead of it. So I can control the point of contact and say, here's boys, what you're going to be facing. A boy is going to come to you and tell you this, this is going to be happening when it does. This is my, uh, uh, this is what we do as a David family. So going back to you, if the algorithms are favoring a person who they don't support his arguments, because most of these virtual governments are more feminist left, all that stuff. Why do you think your messaging got so viral? Well, this is the interesting thing because I didn't put a magic spell on the world. I'm not a magician. You're right. There's obviously a market for what I say. Every People talk about how I became the most viral person on the planet. I'll argue the point. Not only did I become the most viral person on the planet, I did it while being heavily shadow banned. They, they, they've known about me for a while. They've been trying to shut me up for a while. I've been shadow banned forever. So I became the most viral person on the planet with all the algorithms working against me. Unlike people like Logan who have all the algorithms working for them, against me, because I'm resonating with people who are sitting there going, finally, this makes sense to me. This is how I feel inside. And this guy's finally talking about it. Everything else I consume is telling me to do things that just don't resonate with my truth. I'm only saying things that people agree with. So to chop my head off and try and delete me is asinine in and of itself, because there are billions of people out there, millions of people out there who feel the exact same way. This is what I was saying earlier, because, and once again, I'm assuming the social media companies have more, have intellect and people who work for them who are intelligent. If they were smart, if I was a social media company, I would have come to me and said, listen, could, I would have had a board meeting and said, controlled opposition. And I would have come to me and said, Andrew, you have to create your message. We don't want to delete you. We don't want to be censored. But you have to say this, this way, this, this way, today, and slowly perhaps taper me down on certain subjects. That would have been smart. You see, if they would have come to you and said, Completely. listen, we've been following you, buddy. And, 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 I, and, and, I would, we'd like. and, and I would also talk to them and say, listen, I understand I'm now the most viral person on the planet. I have to take responsibility for the things I say. It's the way I say things for a video that gets 300 views is different than the way I say things for a video that gets 3 million views. I respect that. Let's have a conversation. I'm not a loose cannon. I'm a logical actor. They could have done that, but they were emotional. Instead, they martyred me and chopped my head off. And, but that doesn't change anything because there's millions and millions and millions of young men who think the same way I think. There are millions of young men out there who don't want to wear makeup, who don't want to put on a Pokemon suit and be a clown like Logan Paul, who don't want to take transgender blocking drugs, who don't want to uh, assign themselves to any kind of feminist ideas, their dick who don't off. want to chop their dick off, who just want to grow up, go to the gym, get strong, be respected, make money, have a beautiful girl in a sports car. There's millions of men who want that. And I speak to those men. And most they think, men want most that, Most men Andrew. want that. And they think by chopping my head off, those men are going to want something else because they'll get rid of me and they'll put James Charles in front of them and say, no, foundation reviews. It ain't going to work. 
They don't want foundation reviews. It's not what they want. No. And what's it's, it's, it's truly crazy. They think that's going to work in and of itself at all. You don't think it's going to work? I think I've been, I think I've proven that it's not going to work. What's actually the most upsetting is this. I find it extremely hypocritical. And of all the things in the world, my pet peeves, the things that annoy me most are hypocrites. I find it extremely hypocritical that the system itself pretends it gives a shit about men's mental health. It will sit there and pretend it cares about all the men out there who are depressed, struggling, sad. But when I come along and tell them the only way I've ever found personally to be happy and contented, because I can only talk my personal story, is to become a man of status, to become successful, to go through pain, to use my trauma, to use the bad things that happened to me, to galvanize myself against attacks from the matrix, as I've just proven I can easily weather. When I talk about men's mental health, they delete me. I thought you gave a shit about men's mental health. I'm the most popular man on the planet, and 90% of my content is not even about women. It's motivational and antidepressive. And you're going to sit here and delete me saying that I'm bad for women. What about men? I thought you gave a shit. All of a sudden, you don't give a fuck anymore, right? Just delete him. Who cares? I had a man message me. A man emailed me saying that he was going to kill himself. I get about 10,000 emails a week. I don't answer all of them, but I answer some of them. This guy, his email was so short that I believed him. Subject was, I'm going to kill myself. And the thing is, I know you won't reply. I'm going to kill myself. I don't know what to do. That was the email. And I sat there and said, listen, my friend, I get a lot of emails. I don't know how serious you are. I want you to make me a promise. I'm going to guess that you're not in the best physical condition you could be in. I want you to make me a promise that you're going to get six pack first and send me a picture of you with a six pack. And if you still feel like killing yourself after that, I don't know you. I can't tell you what to do, but I want you to get six pack first. Email me back. We start going back and forth, et cetera, et cetera. I convinced him to get the gym. I said, get six packs, see how you feel. If you still feel like killing yourself, then I'm not telling you to kill yourself. I'm telling you that's what I would recommend. Start training. By the time he started sending me physique updates of him in a better condition, he started sending me huge emails of apology and thank you, saying you saved my life. I can't believe I was thinking of killing myself. You can't believe he changed. If that man would have emailed Logan Paul, would Logan Paul have given a fuck? He would have ignored the guy. You think he answers a single fucking email? He doesn't give a shit. All these fucking media figures, all these people who are good for the system, who are dancing on the devil and fucking sitting here talking about dangerous rhetoric and all the other bullshit. You think they'd fucking answer an email? They don't give a solitary fuck about the young men of the world. They would have left that man to die. And even if they would reply to him, what advice would they give? Go take antidepressants and watch my YouTube. They have no value to give a guy because they've never had a life of actual genuine struggle. I'm out here genuinely saving lives, genuinely saying to men, the world you now live in is so competitive that if you're not a competitive male, you're going to be perma depressed. You don't have a mental disease. You're just in a competitive environment and you are losing. You need to become a competitive person. There's no easy way. It's going to be hard. It's going to suck. But if you get to talk G, the name, if you get there, it's a life worth living. Right. That's what I'm saying. And then millions of young men are going, wow, he's showing that you can be born from nothing, single parent on a fucking council estate in the worst town in England, be stabbed, come from nothing and survive and end up with a, a multimillionaire. Uh, maybe I can do it if I work hard and I'm diligent and I try hard and I'm really giving hope to the world. And then they delete me. Then they put up a new thing about men's mental health saying which pill they should take. And then they put James Charles of him on the algorithm. This shit's evil. It's, it's, it's genuinely criminal. I am nothing but a positive force for the world. And this is what I was talking earlier about the hero's arc and the arc and the, and the redemption, because I think that inside of human consciousness, people are very, very familiar with the idea of, of the arc of a villain turning into a hero. It's in the Bible. It's in every superhero movie. The guy starts off bad. He's crazy. He's too bad. We don't want him. He's a maverick. He can't control him, blah, blah, blah. But towards the end, you're like, where's Batman? Where's Batman at? And it's going to take a matter of time before people realize, you know what? Tate was actually a good force for the youth. Perhaps he used to create his message. Perhaps he used to take his newfound fame on board and change the way he says certain things. Agreed. I'm not infallible as an individual. But to sit here and say, I'm dangerous and I must be deleted is disservice to all the men of the world. And then they're going to start printing articles talking about men's mental health. They don't give a fuck about men. They don't give a shit about the 18-year-old boy out there who can't get a girlfriend is genuinely lonely. And the fucking sports stars fucking them all. I'm telling him what he has to do. I'm saying, listen, bro, of course the sports stars fucking them all. He's a G. You ain't shit. If you were a chick, would you choose you? Because I fucking wouldn't. So whose fault is that? The best thing about being a man, the best thing about being a man is you get to build your character from the ground up. You're not born with any value. You're born as a blank slate. I decided I wanted to be a big, toting, kickboxing, Bugatti-driving fucking bad boy. I did it all myself. Right. You get to choose you want to be a musician and be sensitive and play guitar and get them that and be, and be important that way. You get to choose you want to go get in the cage and kick the fuck out of somebody. You get to be, choose to be anything you want. 
but you have to go and do it. Right. It's going to be difficult because it's competitive. But that's the beauty of being a man, the blank slate. And I inspire men to look at themselves as a blank slate and go, you know what? I ain't shit now, but I can become anything I want. How could I possibly give up on myself? And then they delete me. And then they say, we care about men's mental health. But they don't give a fuck. They're lying. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the entire podcast, click over here. And if you want to be connected with experts, influencers such as Kiyosaki, Tate, Connolly, Palmentary, myself, and others, download the app Minect, where you get a chance to connect with these folks by the minute. You get to by the minute or have FaceTimes with them, 15 minutes, ask them any questions you may want to have. Download the app Minect and start connecting with influencers and experts today.